Hey guys, KRXF here, back with my first review of the new year. This time I'll be reviewing the RKF Rider Armor Series Decayed Armor from Kamen Rider GO. This is a figure of GO's Power Up Armor that can change between two forms. This includes the figure with some removable armor pieces, one weapon, and some interchangeable parts. So, let's get started! So, here we have Kamen Rider G.O. with decayed armor, and we'll start by taking a look at the figure in detail. Now, something that makes this figure stand out from the rest is that this is, instead of an armor set that goes on to the normal decayed figure, instead a separate decayed figure that starts with the armor already attached, although technically you have to put it on out of the box, but the base form already has the armor attached. Starting off with the head, you can see it has a unique head design in that the face is basically this flat screen, which instead displays a card of the face, and you can see it has decayed written here in Kakana, Dikeido. You can see it actually has details to make it resemble a rider card, such as the barcode on the side, and then Kamen Rider Decayed here on the bottom. And while the design might be reminiscent of something like a smartphone screen, it's more likely a reference to the Gondorizers for or rather from Kamen Rider Battle Gamba Rising, who are the customizable avatar characters in that arcade game. You'll also see as a cool little detail that he does have the antenna starting off on the display here, but then extending outwards from the helmet. And of course, he also has the slats that are made of cards from Decade's helmet. Coming down to the torso, we got a chest piece, which is also reminiscent of Decade, with the cross on one side, resembling the letter X meaning 10 in Roman numerals. On this shoulder, you've got, again, Decade written in Kakana. Then, across here, you have this very long barcode, with numbers 2009 and 453145 repeated a few times. Now, this number set is significant. Because if you take 453145 and then equivalent that to their number counterpart in the English alphabet, it spells out decade in English. And of course, 2009 is obviously the year that decade started. The thing about the second set of numbers is that it actually has a precedent. Now, if we look here at the common right decade card and flip it over to the back, you can see those numbers are also on decade's symbol and have been since he first debuted. So there's a cool little callback there. Got a bit of nice magenta color on the shoulders, then we get down to the body. We see the armor design is very different from the others, in that it is meant to be more reminiscent of Decade himself, rather than being a sort of generic armor set that is used for the rest of the riders, or for most of them at least. Sorry for cut there, just had a sneeze. Getting back to it, we have the DQ driver with the Geo Ride Watch and then Decayed Ride Watch on the other side. For the uh, arm and leg armor, we do have some magenta stripes going down in it. Obviously, again, reminiscent of Decayed, as well as the stripe patterns that were on Decayed himself. Now, the color scheme isn't exactly spot on, as there are some more bits of magenta that are missing, such as on top of the shoulders, as well as along the arms and the side of the body, but that is a consequence of the gimmick. And you can see a bit of that gimmick here on the back, but that's something I'll go into when we get into that itself. Articulation-wise, it's got a ball-jointed head, though it does have slightly limited range. Full 360 rotation at the shoulders. Have a hinge at the shoulder pad to allow for a full 90 degrees outward. Pretty good single-jointed elbows, though they are a bit blocked off by the shoulder pieces, or rather the gauntlets have a bicep swivel, 
than a wrist swivel, though it's best to keep the wrist straight like this so they can properly line up with the guard pieces. And of course, like with the other armors, you have the ride watch holders molded onto the armor. Then getting to, down to the legs, that forward and back, in and out. Though that's also a case where it's slightly obstructed by the design of the armor, but that can really be helped. Single jointed knee with a pretty good bend thanks to having a break and hinge, or rather thanks to the upper and lower pieces of the leg armor being separate. Then an ankle pivot, if only ever so slightly, and the ankle actually is ball jointed, but it doesn't move that much because of the armor attached. But you can see it does at least bend that much, and the armor moves alongside it. Accessory-wise, the figure comes with the Ride Hay Saber. Of course, this is done all up in a single color plastic, that being black, but of course, within that plastic are all the necessary details. You've got Hay Saber written on the blade, have the dial here with the properly molded hands above and below each other. You've got the slot for Ride Watches, as well as, of course, the handle. And then you also have the details on the back including even the common symbol there. And equipping it is as simple as it is with the other figures, where you just have to basically slot into the hand. And he does get a pretty good grip on it, so you can pose him as you see fit. But with the base figure out of the way, now we can get to the form change gimmick. So, for the form chain gimmick, we're going to need to remove some pieces and then switch around some others. To start, we'll take all these silver pieces on the arms and legs and remove them from the figure. I'll set all of them aside since they won't be needed. Then, coming to the chest plate, we're going to take this piece here and pop this off, and then replace it with this second one, or this alternate one rather. And of note is that the details for the chest plates and the faces are all stickers are all stickers you'll need to apply yourself. Then we're going to take the shoulders or shoulder pads and pop them off. Then swap them around so that the writing that's on the back is now on the front. Can be a little bit tricky, but once you get in there, you should hear it snap into place like that. Do the same on the other side. There we go. Then we're going to take the face and uh, going by the two horns or antennae, we'll remove that. Take the other one and swap it in. Make sure it's completely in place. I'll take these two extra bits and plug them into the arms. I'll need to do that. And it's as easy as just matching up the colors. And here we have Counter Geo Decayed Armor Build Form. So let's take a look. So here we get into the gimmick of Decayed Armor, which is that it can form change into the first or common initial power-ups for previous riders. 
In the case of build, he becomes Rabbit Tank Sparkling form. So starting out with the face, we now have Sparkling's face with Kamen Rider build here on the bottom. Of course, it's still in a card form. For the new chest and shoulders, on the shoulder we have build in the Kaikana, and then across the chest and other shoulder, we have Sparkling in Kaikana. Supakuringu. Getting down to the rest of the body, we can see that the way this works is similar to how Decade changes into other riders. In that basically the way this is, or the way this works, is that you have the upper body and then belt detail and belt itself on top of the Rabbit Tank Sparkling body. You can see it has all the details like the zigzag lines for the cuffs and the, the spiky bits on the arms. As well, again, as well as getting down here we have the details on the legs even down to the proper rabbit and tank feet with the rabbit foot on this side and then the tank foot on the other. Now something I forgot to mention from the articulation bit is that like with the other rider kicks feeders this does have a torso, an ab crunch rather, rather than a ball joint for the waist and uh, definitely does work well alongside the armor because you can see that at no point does it really break up the flow of the armor, since this piece extends all the way up to here. It's definitely a pretty cool gimmick, and certainly is interesting that you have this kind of other form underneath the armor, which is, like I said, kind of the opposite of how the feeders usually are, where you put on the armor to make a form instead of taking them off. And it works quite well. This is also why, as I alluded to earlier, there aren't as many bits of magenta on the figure as there should be because those are to help with the flow of this alternate form. Since, of course, being based on Rev Tank Sparkling, it doesn't have these magenta lines added to it. At the same time, it does work well, and doing this does free up a little bit of the articulation since you don't have anything covering up the arm, so you get that full elbow joint there able to move out the legs a lot more, as well as have a wider range of motion with them. And overall, this does pull off the gimmick quite well. And there we go. Overall, the decayed armor is a solid figure that definitely breaks the mold. While it is a very self-contained figure in that the armor here cannot be used to turn the normal Kyo figure into decayed armor, it makes up for that by having its own self-contained gimmick, and it does so very well. While it does come at the cost of sacrificing some paint apps, it does so so it can well hide the other form hidden within the armor. And I do think it's clever that they also hid it by having the shoulders just need to be reversed in order to change it around, as well as having some swappable parts and little bits that you attach after you remove the, the armor. And both forms do look quite good, along with how, even with the armor on, it does have a very good range of articulation. Certainly more so than some of the previous armors. Now, while it is a shame that this only gives you one final form time with how it works and with how within the show there are three shown so far with more to come, it does make sense that they just pick one so as to keep things simple and keep costs down. So. This gives you a nice, solid figure of decayed armor with one of its final form times for a quite affordable price. So if you're a fan of this form, I can definitely recommend picking up the figure. Next time, I'll be bringing the Deluxe Beyond Driver, Thursday at 6pm PST. So, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And if you're new and would like to see more, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. And for now, this is KRX50, riding off.